Do you have another banner you want on top of it? I love waiting for the live to happen. Oh my god, there it is. Scrolls. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi. How are you? Mm. Hi, Macy. Hi. Oh, I noticed you Welcome have a new everyone. banner right now. The love incubator. Yes. Ooh, I want to hear more. Say more before we start. Dang. Yeah, well, it's it's actually on our topic. That's why I was laughing so hard when I got your message because I was like, oh, well, um, starting mid-August, I'm doing a five-week deep dive to support people in going from fear to love, which in so many, huh. what I really like, the, the body piece of it is going from protection to connection. So that's what the love incubator is focused on for those five weeks. And uh -huh. it, it's, it's exactly that. It's like, you know, how powerful fear is in keeping us from what I want, what we want. And I'm sure you have a lot of interesting things about that with money. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's so that's I love that I channeled you today and mm -hmm. just knew that that's what you needed or what, yeah. you, what you were excited to talk about. Yeah. And of course, to me, fear is probably the absolute number one limiting issue for everybody in both love and money. You know, it's yeah. those unconscious fears that we have where we can we, we try to minimize them. And if we don't figure out how to overcome our fear, it's, it's the greatest limiting factor in getting what we want. So, yeah, I mean, we could do yep. like, uh, uh, you and I together could do a 10 day workshop on fear and love and money, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, what I love about really diving into it and basically facing it is that um, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, the more we recognize how it's derailing us and messing us up in, in certain cases and actually add in tools and practices and, and systems that support us in being secure and safe and connected to our money and love. Yeah. Things change. Yeah. And then you just kind of don't buy into the same old stories anymore. Yeah. I, I'm curious um, what you, like, how, what would you define fear as? Like, how do you think of fear and how do you talk about fear? I don't know if you and I've ever had this direct conversation about it. I'm curious. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of things. I, I see it as, like this emotional state that um, that brings us into a story about what we can't have or what we can't handle or what we can't create. And then as we buy into that story, then that impacts our choices and our decisions. And then we kind of are in a cycle of that. For me, you know, just being able to recognize fear for what it is, then helps me to separate from falling into the cycle of all that. And it does take some practice and skill. And certainly in relationship, it's not um, necessarily instant, although it probably could be, but, you know, we're kind of not trained to instantly change like that. Um, yeah. What do you say fear is? You know, it's funny. I have, um, I was just putting in the comments for anyone watching right now or later, put your questions in the comments about what's your biggest love and or money fear. That way we can chat about it here. Um, you know, I always say fear is the future expectation of awful results. So oh. like, I like the F E A R, right? So yeah. future expectation, adding the of and their awful results because it's a future based projection of a made up story. Mm -hmm. And, and so, and often it's based on past 
uh, challenges, you know, we could say traumas or experiences that we've had, and then we replay those out in the future and we project into the future something that's made up. And so I think about like worry and fear and stress as it's like praying for trouble to come your way because you're making yeah. up the story in your mind that something awful is going to happen. And it's just a habit and a pattern. And, and you know, it was, it was conditioned into us to be fearful because we have that automatic response of tracking our surroundings for danger. Yeah. And so it's like a survival wiring. And then if the problem is our brain doesn't know the difference between a real threat and an imagined threat. And when we live in that place of fear all the time, we just keep creating creating threats for ourselves. And then it, it causes us to limit what we do in the world. It's yeah, huge. I love, <clears throat> I love that. And it's also, you know, really noticing, I know Joe Dispenza talks about this, where it's like the chemical aspect of that. Yeah, it's like an addictive drug. And we sort mm -hmm. of get used to that being a way of being. And yes. And, you know, the, our world shows us that, you know, we're supposed to be afraid of this, afraid of viruses, afraid of, you know, people, afraid of all of these things. And, you know, it is a choice to decide to make a new choice. <laughs> I mean, to, to totally. support ourselves in a different way. And I find that a lot of people including myself, one of the things that I misidentified was that if I wasn't in fear, it felt like nothing was happening. That oh. like nothing, you know, that, that like just space and relaxation was uh, a sign that oh, nothing's happening. I need to create something like there was just an interesting relationship with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like fear, um, fear as a motivator. Yeah, and just as a um, just a comfort, an uncomfortable comfort, mm -hmm. so just a way of being. And for me, I also think it was part of it was like, oh, well, this is then I'm valuable if I'm busy and I'm having drama and I'm having this stuff going on in my world. Then, then look, I'm real. I'm real. I'm feeling and I'm you know, having yeah. all this stuff happening. And um, I recognize more and more and more that my new relationship with ease and flow and space and, and that kind of feeling as something that I'm asking for more. Yeah, me too. So much, so much <sighs> like that's the feeling of it. <laughs> like, <Yeah. sighs> like you don't, I mean, I, the, the reason I said fear is motivation when you were saying what you said, cause like I, it, I've reflected a lot on how much of my life history I created results through fear as the main motivating factor. You know, it was like the underlying force instead of being inspired to move forward in joyful action. It was like fear-based motivation. It was like right. cracking the whip. Like, it's oh true. my God, if you keep yourself constantly scared, you can get a lot done, which it worked yeah. in a lot of ways. I did get a lot done and it didn't feel good. You know, it's like, I didn't feel yeah. great while I was doing it because I was you know, there's that underlying security, for, you know, when we're talking about money, if you're doing money, building your wealth through fear based means, it means that you have a scarcity mentality, you know, you're always thinking like, I've got to keep pushing hard, otherwise, it might all fall apart. And I won't make the money I need to make. And that's, a, you know, it's a pretty significant survival based threat. And it's, it's not very fun to live that way. <laughs> right. Well, and that links to what you said last week, which really stuck with me all week was the patience thing. Yeah. With patience, like impatience as a form of scarcity and, you know, fear as a form of scarcity. And yeah, as a motivator, I mean, just look at how many sales pages and yeah. you know, sales conversations and, you know, Facebook ads and all of the things that can promote things from the space of fear. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and it is a great, it's funny you were, you're saying this because I was talking, 
I was on a podcast interview yesterday and they were asking about um, sales marketing strategy. And I was talking about how we live by the pleasure pain principle and that you've got to know your avatar really well to understand how to market to them. And, you know, it's like they want to move away from pain and move toward yeah. pleasure. And if you can hit those hot buttons, then it's helpful. And so we were having that conversation, like, is that responsible marketing type of conversation? You know, it's like, to me, I go like, you want to understand human behavior and it's exactly what we're saying. It's like people live stuck in their lives, not getting the love or the money they want forever because of these things. Like, mm -hmm. and so when you're speaking to somebody in their hot buttons, yeah, you're going to evoke their, you're going to trigger the fear because yeah. that's, we all have it. I, I, I mean, know. I've never met a person yet who doesn't. I am glad. Let's, let's talk about this. Cause I think this is, um, this is important because there are some things where it's like, you know, I think about it in terms of people who come to me saying, oh, I'd love to start a family and I'm, you know, 40 and, you know, I haven't had any healthy relationships and, you know, where, where I sometimes will go because it's kind of a thing. It's like, okay, well, What's it going to take for you to take a step to figure this out? And what are the consequences of not choosing something different? And that yeah. usually does elicit some fear. Mm -hmm. of like, okay, well. Yeah. 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 I mean, my my own personal experience was that. I mean, I didn't make a choice or I didn't even notice. I know that I could learn about relationship stuff and change my world for so many of my dating years that by the time I made that choice, I was already in my forties and that sort of like kid boat sailed, which was fine because that wasn't something that I was wanting to create. But I think it's kind of interesting. Yeah. There's a, there's a line there. Well, you know, it's funny. I'm going to, I'm writing, I'm going to show this banner fear in love. I'm getting too old in money. I'm getting too old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, and it shows up in love. It's like, oh, no, I'm getting too old. Maybe it's too late for me to find the one. And like, if I did want to have kids and all those things in money, it's like, oh, no, I'm getting too old. And how am I going to deal with retirement? Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's that fear of like, I'm getting too old. Time is going by too fast. It maybe it's too late for me. Right. And yeah, all these other years, I did it wrong. Yeah, with the judgment that comes with yes, that, like going totally. both directions. Yeah. In that. So you know, and it, yeah. to me, you know, in studying, I'm immersed right now in another access consciousness class. And it's really fun to learn about fear as a distractor implant, they call it. So fear mm -hmm. as a distraction from our actual power. So I in money, it's like, okay, when we get fearful that we're not going to make the money or not going to be successful or just get get in the spiral of fear same in relationships oh my god i'm going to get too old no one's out there for me there's there aren't any good ones left that spiral then you're taken away from the power that you have to actually choose something mm -hmm. and to yeah. actually create and to actually listen to the wisdom that wants to come up. I mean, I'm doing this five week love incubator around moving from the protection mode, which is, is a fear based mode to a connection mode. And there is rewiring that happens. If we have an addiction to fear, yeah. there are some deep rooted tracks. And so, you know, for many people, it's really hard to believe that that doesn't have to be the case. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, well, it's a skill. I, you it's know, something. it is. I, you're, I want to say so many things that you just brought mm -hmm. up because, you know, let's say you've had a history that has been abusive or, and I always complicate these words by, because the labels I don't always love. Yes. But let's say that you've had a, a challenged history where there was a lot of, of, 
perceived trauma in your life, you're going to have different brain development and you're actually going to respond to fear more intensely. And then it's going to have a deeper rooted wiring into your system. So for example, for me, like it's taken me years to have the, to shift my automatic responses away from like startle. I still have like a startle response. That's really intense. And like, I've, I've trained my brain very strategically in a direction to respond to life differently, just because like, first I was premature. So my brain, my brain development was already wired differently. And so fear lives in your amygdala and it lives in the, the, the animal part of your brain where we have monkey mind. And so we, we really, the only way to change that is through conscious intention and action. And if you were in a, let's say you lived in the perfect childhood, you probably have less response and less fear. You have like less of an automatic response and you have less fear that you make up in your mind. You know, the, the, you could live in different environments where you would have more of a rapid response to that. And I want people to know it's absolutely possible to change. The cool thing about brain plasticity is that you can change your brain and reshape it. It takes a little time though. Right. And so it takes this dedicated effort to go like, okay, I can actually overcome my fears. I mean, I used to be so scared of everything all the time. You know, it was like just lived in a state of instant automatic fear. And I don't know if I ever told you this story. I was, um, at a Martini event and I had like this wild epiphany crying moment of like, I, I got this, I, I don't know what you'd call it. I, I've been liking the term lately, divine download. Yeah. <laughs> I got like a divine download and it was like a voice in my head or from wherever said, there's nothing to be afraid of. Like, like you can, like, it was like, and for me at the time, it was this spiritual transformation because I had been very averse to like anything related to the word God because I grew up as a fundamentalist Christian. Yes. And so it was we were having this spiritual conversation and and talking about God as grand organized design and like universal intelligence and all this stuff. And I was I had this huge it was like, I mean, it makes me want to cry when I talk about it right now. It's like I I reconnected with my spirituality. And mm-hmm. in that moment, it was like. Uh, there is nothing to be afraid of, let go and know that all is God, like grand organized design. It was like a voice in my head and I just started crying. And ever since that day, my relationship to fear has been very, very different. And it was such a gift. And and I can't say like, it, it, it wasn't like I had this epiphany and it just came out of the, the clear blue when I was in a horribly fearful moment. It was more like I've been avidly pursuing growing and learning how to overcome my fears because I know that it can be an incredible limiter of your power. And so I was on a conscious track to do that. And so, you know, it's like for everyone watching this at whenever you're watching it, know that you can dramatically shift your relationship to fear and it will give you very different outcomes in your love and your money. Yes. I'm glad you said that because the time and what is possible and being able to You know, that sounds like it was a big moment, which created a big, you know, energetic experience in your body, which, you know, probably clearly left a mark. And um, I mean, the time in practicing these things is really important. And yeah, um, yeah, that's really powerful. And same with the relationships, because it's you know, and I think about money, like there, there are actual money traumas <laughs> that people get growing up, not just, you know, the relationship traumas. And even if it's a good childhood, you still are making up childhood level beliefs around what relationship is. And that's where yeah. I'm typically functioning from. And do you really want to date as a child? Or do you want to, you know, be able to come mm. in from a powerful place as that wise woman and, you know, being able to know that you can handle things and get the tools and skills to navigate relationships in a whole different way? Yeah, I love what you just said. So this is what it made me think of. I'm just going to put it up here. Fear holds you in the childish past. So it's like whatever wound you experience, you keep replaying out in your adult life back at that stage of when it happened originally. And then you are you you, you stay that person if you don't consciously shift it. Yeah. Oh, and that's that was the other thing. You said something 
I mean, the that reptilian brain piece, like the fear holds you in the childish past. That's what's kind of interesting about learning about the nervous system, because the systems that are doing the protection, that are doing the fear, that are doing flight or fight are the oldest parts. Yeah, totally. So it's like that tends to be the leader, you know, moving away from pain and seeking pleasure. And yet, you know, knowing that we are conscious being that is the newest space and yeah. continues to become even more um, powerful as you know, anyone who's here is, is likely already doing some studies on awareness and mindfulness and something like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, being aware of that was something that just this week I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I always knew that that part was the oldest part, but I didn't really know why I cared. And, and it's kind of, it just kind of clicked for me. It's like, oh, well, yeah. So it's, you know, natural that that's going to be the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, something that stands out in what you're saying from my perspective is how avidly you are continuing to practice growth work. <laughs> you know, it's like you just talk about accessing consciousness and like, or access consciousness and going to workshops and like reading. And you and I talk about this stuff all the time. Yeah. It's like our lives, like we live it, we love it, we learn it, we do it. And, and so for people watching, one of the things I always tell my people is like, you got to learn to be a master of yourself. And the reason why is because we are wired for fear, for survival, for limiting ourselves to be kind of animalistic, you know? And it's mm -hmm. like, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, if you want to stay in that place, stay in that place. Obviously, if yeah. they're here watching us, they're probably not in that place. But it's like, I, I like to remind people that it's a constant journey and a constant practice. And that I, I still work on myself every day because I break through to new layers of myself. Like I, this week, I had like a, a a day of like massive shifts through crying and journaling and releasing and learning and growing. And it's a constant and, and I love it. I don't want it to yeah. seem like it's drudgery yeah. on that consistency. To me, it's like I look forward to learning more about myself because yeah. if I didn't, my fears would have kept me stuck forever. I mean, I, I they would have just taken hold and I would have never gotten anywhere close to where I am today. I do think that's so important to share because I'm the same way. I I mean, yeah. I, everything I do has some like one hand in some sort of personal development at this point. Yeah. Like, you know, everything I read when I wake up, when I go to bed, I'm reading, I'm doing my meditation practices. And that's really because the reward is so great for me. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it brings so much more ease into my life. And as I acknowledge that, so mm -hmm. for many of you out there who are like, well, I'm doing this work and then I'll be done with this work and then I don't have to do any more work. Anyone out there who's saying, oh, I, I have to do more work and like, what's wrong with me that I have to do more work? Like that kind of conversation in your head. Once again, that is fear talking. Yeah. And actually, what else can you have? What else would you like to ask for? And how much fun can you have with all of this? Because whether you're trying, whether you are asking for more money, or whether you're asking for a love relationship, it's, it's, there's always going to be a next level, I think, because I like that growth. Yeah. Um, and so on that note, too, it's like, what can you acknowledge right now that all of your choices for personal development and learning and being a part of these groups has created? And, yeah. if, you know, can you acknowledge, wow, right now I'm here because I made those other choices? Yeah. You know, you're bringing up something I think is so interesting because, I mean, obviously we know my company name is NFA money, no fucking around money. So for me, I'm always like deep dive, go all the way, be radically responsible, like bring it on. It's not work. It's actually like it, it's yeah. it's this it's a joyful process to uncover new parts of ourselves. 
And I know that that's not how everybody thinks. <laughs> and so it's like when you say, you know, some of the people having that fear of like, oh my God, I have to do more work. What's wrong with me? Like, I always say like, shift that perspective to like, bring it on awesome that I came yeah. to this place where I realized that there are great teachers like you and me who are dedicating our lives to learning everything we can to help people get there faster, you know? And that's why, and just like become, to me, I think one of the most important things is to become to fall in love with the process of becoming a master of yourself. Yeah. Right? You know, cause then you can, you have a magic wand to do anything you want. Yeah. And also I know that when I first started my business and I was doing a lot of different things to expand and grow and work with my own money stories and, and, you know, business processes and all of that, that I can look back and, and see kind of how I overcomplicated it and brought a lot of heaviness into it because I was like, well, I have to look like that person or I have to look at like that person. So there was, there was stuff that was in that experience that now I don't do. Yes. So, you know, part of my own self mastery was, is, is actually being able to have so much more fun and ease with, with growth, even like yeah. so how many people have associated growth with pain, you know, there are sayings out there, no pain, no gain, like, yeah, I don't actually believe that. And, yeah. you know, yeah, well, you said something too, it's like the the making it hard in the beginning. And also it's like, com it, it's comparing yourself to other people, right? It's like, you're like, they're ahead of me. So there's fears around, I'm not going to get there fast enough. I, uh, what if I can't ever get there? What if I don't become as big as them? Like all those things, right? What if I don't ever get the love like they have? Yeah. And so there's that. And then it's, um, oh, I just lost my thought of the other thing I wanted to say that you were sharing. Darn it. It went. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Overcomplicating it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Overcomplicating it. To me, like fear stands out as a mask of like we do a lot of avoidance strategies in order to compensate for our fears. Like we do a lot of pretending and imposter syndrome is a fear. And yet when we have imposter syndrome, we overcompensate to hide that we feel like imposters, which is a fear, right? We're mm -hmm. afraid that people are going to realize we're a fraud. So we act like an imposter in a dating situation. It could be like, we're afraid that people are not going to like who we authentically are. So we put on masks and pretend yeah. we're someone else. And then you're, you're guiding someone to fall in love with a farce. Like it's yeah. not who you really are. And then how can ever anyone ever really love you deeply if they don't really even know who you are? And so, you know, fear is like, whew, it's intense. Yeah. It's, it's a big one. And yeah, I just, I want people to be encouraged to go like, okay, yeah. everyone struggles with these things. Like everybody struggles with this stuff. Yeah. You know? And yeah. And it's possible to overcome and, exactly. and work with yeah. And what yeah. if fear was never real? Yeah. I, I, I'm curious about this. Okay. Cause I've had people ask me this before. Like, isn't fear, what do you think about fear being a good thing? Like, is it something we want to eliminate or is it something we want to work with or change I don't our relationship? Think we have to eliminate to it? it. I feel like it's more changing the relationship to it. Like, I practice not buying into it. And really noticing when that stuff comes up that there's probably something else available that I can be aware of or acknowledge or play with that doesn't have to feel like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I love the book, The War of Art, because they, it's a whole book on all of the ways resistance shows up. And I think of resistance oh. as a form of fear. And mm -hmm. it's very sneaky, you know, and it's any time you're asking to make a change. If you're asking, if you're on a spiritual path or you're trying to lose weight or you have, you know, you'd like to have a new kind of relationship or anything matters of the heart, body, money, like spiritual, like all of these things naturally bring in the fears in the forms of inner critics, in yeah. the forms of limitations, in the forms of, like you said, avoidance. 
Yeah. And, and so then your system wins. You know, yeah. if you fall into that, then it's like, you know, the other book I would say that's related to this too is The Big Leap when he talks about upper limit problems. And that's typically when the fears really come up is when you are on the edge of something great. And yeah. me, just knowing that and going, oh, am I actually like freaking out or is this an upper limit problem? And usually it's, yes, it's an upper limit problem. Yeah. And then, yeah, well, you know, I don't think we can be void of it, but I think we yeah. can have awareness of what it's doing. Yeah. Well, what to me, what stands on what you're saying is like, it, it makes me think about how you can use fear as a feedback system. Yeah. So just like your emotions, like fear is a version of an emotion and you go like, oh, I'm afraid of this. Is this something I need to lean into and step through so that I can break through to the next level? Or is it an actual survival threat that I need to listen to and, and go the other direction? Right. And yeah. so like I go like, of course, if you're in a survival situation, we need to have the fear response where you have the instinct to fight, flight, freeze. Right. Yeah. That can save your life. But we're talking about like these made up versions in our brain. And when you notice the fear, it can be a really good indicator as to your next move and breaking through to the next level. So it's like it, fear yeah. is so cool in those ways. Like I think of it as there's benefits and drawbacks to fear. Yeah. If you know how to use your conscious awareness and be self-reflective about it yes. and sit with it and not, you know, the uh, Carl Jung's uh, saying what you avoid persists and grows in size. So it's like you avoid the fear and it's just going to get worse until it's big enough that you have to face it. <laughs> and we don't necessarily want to attract it that way. You know, it's like for me, I'd rather just face it consciously and go like, mm -hmm. oh, my fear is my fear is showing up. What is the next layer of me to dig into so that I can understand that fear? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good because when you notice that you know, one of the things that I know will be part of the incubator is practicing that, like noticing that, oh, you know, I'm scared to go on a date or I feel really like anxious about that. Then it's like asking, OK, yeah. well, is there an actual threat? Because, um, you know, yeah, the system is designed for that. But ninety nine percent of the time there's yeah. not. It's just made up in our brains. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I keep having it play out in my mind, the the idea of like a child touching a stove and then never, ever doing it again. Like it takes one time of that, that experience to have that reactive response that protects you from that day forward. The issue is that what will happen like when we're little kids, let's say you get rejected and and or you have a negative situation that you perceive in your mind as being really bad, like rejection or, you know, uh, marginalization, like, you know, being poor, like all those things, bankruptcy, that might not happen to your kid, but it might happen to your family. And then you develop this really strong response in your subconscious being yeah. about to avoid at all costs those things in the future. And so if you don't get conscious of those, it's going to run your life forever. And so you, you, you like facing your fears. And when I say facing your fears, it's, I, I don't love or buy into the philosophy, like, just, you know, if you have fear, do it anyway. Like, sure, yeah. that can work. But it's so much more powerful to actually go, what is the fear? Let me get conscious of it so that I can then choose how to respond to it differently in the future. And then it doesn't yeah. run your life anymore. It, that's yeah. how I like to do it. Yeah, I think there is definitely a need for some kindness yeah. and presence <laughs> and um, exactly. And yeah. I, I do find that it's diminished so much in my world where I just yeah. don't buy into, I just don't have those automatic fears as much as I used to because I've changed yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm curious about the money though. Like, are people actually afraid of money and not know it? Like, are they afraid of actually getting money and not? Oh know yeah, it? absolutely. Yes. It, and it'd be similar to saying like, are they afraid of getting a relationship? It's always about, it's not about the actual thing. It's all the ideas they have around the thing. Right. So it's like yeah. people are afraid of what financial success could mean to their identity, to the way they're treated, to their own self-worth, to their judgments and subconscious fears around it. So they might uh, sabotage 
ha having more money or they might sabotage through losing big amounts of money or and so they stay at this money set point because that's where fear keeps them. And so yeah. fear is operating in all of the sabotage spaces. You know, it's yeah. it's an unconscious fear of what you're making up the story to be about having yeah. that thing that you're trying to attract and trying being the key word because you're you're you have those subconscious fears around it. And so it's it's our job to unearth our subconscious fears in both love and money. And, you yeah. know, I wanted to ask, like, so you said in the incubator, um, where did our, it's funny that I, I just noticing that our, your, our, ta our name tags aren't showing. So I don't know if other people. Oh, they go them. off when the regular banner's up. Oh, but they'll go back on. oh, let's see. Let's hide that. Oh, it's the other banner. The other. Oh, let's see. Cause I want everyone to be able to see. Okay. So, yeah. so, and then that one. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so Macy is doing the love incubator dot club. Go there for information. Tell us like, I, since we're talking about fear, like tell people watching, what are the main things they're going to get from that? And then I'll talk about Moneymaker Lab. Yeah, the main things that you're going to get are actual experiential practices that do dissolve the fear so that you have the capacity to receive love. We can cheerlead mm -hmm. our way through this, it, but it doesn't work. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is about getting that deeper rewiring to open the heart to receive love. And it's one thing that I see over and over and over again, where people are unconsciously, you know, or consciously, some people know, yeah, I have a wall up, I have a barrier up, I'm, you know, definitely don't want to get hurt again. And therefore, there's a lot more effort happening, that is pushing love away rather than being able to be in a space where you can have fun and be curious and actually feel safe in a relationship that's everything it's huge god and it's what an incredible feeling to feel safe and amazing in a relationship like uh such a good feeling yeah <laughs> i'm so grateful for that in my relationship every day like i want to cry right now thinking about mm -hmm. it it's just like uh it's so soothing and wonderful and it's possible for everyone yeah <sighs> Yes. Okay. So Love Incubator Club. And is it, is it a program that you offer to work with people? This is a group experience. It's not something okay. I offer all the time. It's a okay. five week thing that's starting mid August, August 21st. Okay. I have two groups going and it's only 500 bucks to do it. And it's includes one of my 30 day awesome. practices, which is Oh my is God. Really I have people powerful. to send your way. I can't wait. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, my for Moneymaker Lab, I've just started. It's a Facebook group and it's private and it's for driven entrepreneurs and coaches, online entrepreneurs and coaches who want to build their business to six figures plus. And I bring in tips, tools. It's organically evolving as I'm growing it right now because I'm new to Facebook groups. And so I do lives in there. I do, I'll start doing webinars. Um, I want to do a lot of community engagement. I actually send everyone a card in the mail, like personally with an NFA sticker. And like, I, I want to build a really solid, awesome community. They get a free um, 30 day mini course called NF, that's uh, called 30 Money Making Secrets. And then that opens the door to all of the things that I offer, which I have all kinds of cool offerings and, you know, programs to work with people to help them make money more easily and overcome these fears. You know, it's like yeah. all of the work I do is about unconscious fears, really, because yes. just like you said in love, like you can you can kind of cheer your way through things and you can force and you can push and you can mask. And when you do that, you will never actually feel good in my world, in the business world. It's like you will end up overworking, feeling stressed, building a prison out of your business, um, not making the money you want to make. And so getting rid of those rooted fears and unconscious beliefs is what lays the foundation for you to really enjoy your money making process. And that's the main goal I have with people is like, let's help you make money doing exactly what you love and, and learn how to make whatever amount you want and really feel good about it and build your wealth over the long term playing every day. Oops. Yeah, I think that's definitely I can say you're amazing at that. And the thing that really strikes me about all that is, you know, in the relationship space, People can go, okay, look at their love life and say, I would like a person. I don't have a person. It's not working. But they can also really sense the barriers. I think in the money space, it can be really sneaky. So for those of you out there who are like, oh, yeah, I can receive money. I'm, yeah, it's totally like something else's problem. 
I be aware of that because it's so interesting how our money story can have this actual fear of receiving money and we don't know it. Oh, yes. Huge. You know, I love that he says I have a client I worked with just today and we're we are working on his ability to receive. And as he expands in his ability to receive just compliments, even he is having the biggest shifts happen in his life and business, you know, and I'm like in, in work world and I'm just like, this is so cool. And it was something that I really struggled with exactly what you're talking about. It's like the lack of the ability to receive. And, and this could even look as simple as like when people compliment you, you minimize it and don't like compliments and you feel weird about it. You don't like gifts. You don't like it when people pay for you. You're limiting your potential moneymaker because the universe is wanting to give to you all the time. So yeah. if you aren't willing to receive, you're blocking your money flow. And people, and it sounds so counterintuitive, like, really, why would I ever say no to money? We do it all the time in very interesting ways. So yeah, thanks yep. for pointing that out. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, fun. Yay. Yes. Yes. Oh, so thanks many good things. everyone for being here. Yes. I, I look forward to seeing your questions and do reach out to us. We're real people on the other side, ready to support you in both of these areas. And Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I know you're open to it. I'm open to it. And I the most important thing is that I want to connect with you, meet you and and look at what what else is possible. Yes, yes. And yes, couldn't have said it better. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for being Bye. here this week or watching the replay. We'll see you next time. Bye.